What's up, everybody? Merry Christmas, and welcome to the holiday episode of the Pete's Basement Show. We got Cheeseburger joining us, Ramon as usual. We got a great show lined up for you. We got some really cool questions, and right now we're going to talk about illegitimates number one, ghost cop number one, eight bit zombies. A quick special from <laughs> AP Entertainment. Harley Quinn number one. Amazing Spider-Man, the 700 point issues that we're going to talk about. And finally, also from AP Entertainment, we're going to talk about a very zombie Christmas, number five. And also, we got uh, these books called Paragon that our boy Paul Jameson sent us from the Superhero Network. You can follow them on Facebook and Twitter. We're going to give those a quick review. We got the contest to go over. And... We got some drinks to pour is what I think we got to do. <laughs> oh, boy. There we yeah. go. Would you like one, sir? <sighs> well, you know. The correct answer is yes. Yes. There oh, you yeah. go. Do you have trouble talking to your kids about drinking and drugs, keeping them out of the liquor cabinet and the medicine cabinet? Well, now with the patent pending bottle blocker, you don't have to worry. All you got to do is take one of these seals right here, pop it over the top, and take one of these... Patent pending twist ties. Lock it right up. Just under the cork should do the trick. And trust me, that is not coming off. And if it is broken, you'll know they got into your stash. Good, try to open that. Meanwhile, you guys go to bottleblocker.com and pop in the code Pete's Basement, capital P, capital B, and get five bucks off your first shipment. You get 24 locks in each package. Nice. Look, even Ramon can't get it. It's actually pissing them off. Yes, it is. <laughs> I want to bite it. <sighs> but that would defeat the purpose. Mm -hmm. Yes. Bottleblocker.com. Keep your drinks to yourself. That's some good stuff. Yeah, that is good. So our boy Paul Jameson hit us up with his creator-owned Paragon. It's uh, basically about this guy who, he's just a normal, regular dude, and all of a sudden his father dies, not tragically, but all of a sudden, and he's pretty much traumatized by this. Like, his father was, you know, his best friend, mm. you know, the dude that he grew up with, and his mother never really, you know, took on that same parenting role as his dad, so he was kind of lost. He didn't really connect with his mother or his brother, so he was despondent, and he left home just kind of wandering and, you know, pretty much feeling depressed and shit. And you might say, hey, you know, how's this guy become a superhero? He just fucking winds up trying to kill himself, and he actually survives it. So he finds this kind of new lease on life, uh, but he's still homeless, and he needs money. So he signs up for these medical testing things, like where they give you drugs and mm -hmm. shit to, and, you know, yeah, his, yeah. they'll catalog the results. You become a guinea pig, basically. So he's taking all of these different pills and everything for over a month, and it's driving him absolutely crazy. And he, like, keels over and dies. So since he's just a homeless bum, these, you know, fucking mis these miserable doctors that are testing all of this stuff out, they just dump his body in a ditch. Of course. Yeah. Which that's is what apparently what that's happens what to, you know, uh, homeless people that they test drugs on. <laughs> so he comes back to life thanks to all of these drugs working in his system, and now he's, he just starts to learn that he's got superpowers. He comes back to the homeless shelter. He meets this nice girl named Letitia, and, you know, they having fun he's finding that you know he's happy again he's not depressed no more and all of a sudden he you know she's trying to change a car tire and the jack falls out so he's the book is very wordy like you can tell uh paul james is very smart he's got a lot of good vocabulary mm -hmm. and he's talking a lot of math like uh, i think part of this guy's powers is he can calculate shit really really well because he's telling you how far in terms of distance that she is from him and how fast, literally like down to the nanosecond that he would have to go from here to there to reach her in time. And then all of a sudden bl he blinks and he's there holding the car up, like some incredible yeah. Hulk shit mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah, seriously. So. That sounds pretty cool. You know, she's very encouraging of this. Like, you know, her new boyfriend's got superpowers, which I think every girl should be. Like if I had superpowers, I'd want my girl to be really thrilled for me. Mm -hmm. So she gives him this costume and everything. She makes it for him and encourages him to, you know, go out and do something with your powers. Well, at one point, he, there's a couple of gangbangers getting into a shootout, and they have 
you know, some stray bullets and shit that are aiming at these little kids in costumes. So he goes and stands in front of the kids. He's bulletproof. The bullets ricochet off him. And one of the things in the book he says, well, it seemed like a great idea at the time, but not he saved the kids, didn't think about the ricochets, and it hit his girlfriend and killed her. Oh, so now he's depressed again. So now we got a depressed guy with fucking crazy ass superpowers. And he doesn't really know what to do with himself. So he goes off and he's just trying to find a new place to live and start again and everything. And this is all in the first issue. The first issue ends with him finding a new place to live. And the guy who apparently owns the house is his father, magically alive. This is all in the first issue. And you notice uh, Paul sent us two issues. The first, One of them is the take from his vantage point, from this guy, Ben, who is Paragon, and the other is from this omniscient narrative <clears throat> dude who is, like, watching over him and sa saying it from, a, uh, a like, a third-party perspective. Okay, yeah, yeah. With different the, art also. Very different, completely different art, different paneling and everything. Basic, oh, wow. you know, so story is kind of the same. Switch. Switching. For some Air indie rating? stuff, man, it was really cool. It was very oh, wow. engaging. It was it was a little tough to get into. Like I said, very wordy, very big. I had to pull out a fucking dictionary at least twice, Paul. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and I'm a pretty smart dude, not for nothing. I only play a moron on TV. But a, a very engaging story and very powerful stuff. Like the whole, like you really felt when, when he, the death of his father and how it affected him. And how, like, all of a sudden, you know, he he's just so fucking despondent and everything. And he's he's trying to find a reason to live. And his mother's sending him for therapy and shit. And that's not working. Mm -hmm. And he's got a couple of really cool lines. He's like, I can't imagine telling my problems to somebody who is getting paid to hear this shit. And she's never had any problems of her own. Talk about, like, his therapist and shit. Right. And, you know, it was a really cool book. I recommend you try to, you know, get a hold of it. Contact these guys, Superhero Network, on Facebook and Twitter. Tell them you saw the review on the Pete Spaceman show. Cool book, man. And yeah, really yeah. cool, like very um, I love the stylistic art. Yeah, I, I love the concept of the yeah. dual the dual art treatment. I yeah. Think that's really cool. I'd like to see this that kind of continue on as um, you know, like separate issues. It's a lot of work. I know it's a lot of fucking work. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, who's, but hey, everything's in blue, so um, at least the color scheme is established. Uh, illustrator and colorist is uh, Gottfried Moina on the um, omniscient narrative one. And we have Gilbert Dudley on the more comic strippy <clears throat> uh, first person Cartoon from Paragon's yeah. viewpoint. Okay. But uh, Paul Jameson, very cool book, man. Thanks for sending it to us and lots of luck, man. I had a rough. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, so let's talk book of the week. Uh, surprise of surprises, illegitimate number one. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, this is really crazy, man. Yeah, one hell of a trip. Basically, all you got to think about is James Bond's kids. Yeah. James Bond's illegitimate kids from all yep. of the fucking you know yeah. pussy galore and <laughs> I, a lot of vagina and whatever the fuck all of these other girls that, names that was. was Austin Powers. All right, whatever. <laughs> Ivana on the top was one of them. I think from the <laughs> Zenia on the shit. top. Yeah, Fa that was Famke Jansen. Mm -hmm. Golden Knight. Yeah, he so. had kids with some of these broads, and he. It's not what James a great Bond, by death. the way. But... It's not James Bond. It's this guy with Steel. Or yeah, Jack yeah. Steel. Uh, yeah, Classic like, fucking stupid name. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, but holy splash page. Oh, <laughs> it's like, okay, you know, he, sophisticated yeah. secret agent, you know, he's been in business for years upon years. <laughs> and in business he's, indeed. <laughs> it's cool how, like, the, and the way he goes going out, the, decades. the way he goes out is fucking Looney Tunes. It's, it's a like, splash like, page of his head getting splashed all over a fucking train tunnel. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was just like, what? No. Yeah, really? I didn't see that coming. No, no not no. at all. I yeah, he apparently did neither did he. Oh, Turn around. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> Holy shit. But, um, you know, just the concept that they're going to bring in a couple of... Well, like halfway right. through the book, when he when he's dead, I'm like, so you just killed the main character. What's going on? Like, yeah, he's, not, he's not the main character. Apparently not. No, nope, his, his children. And yeah. they talk about all the, like, the different special skills that they have that I guess MI6 and yeah. the, U the U.S. have been... Well, MI6 has been cultivating it on the side, and they're working with the U.S. to stop this one guy who's like the mad scientist, evil villain, or whatever. Right. 
and each of the kids has something special about them. Like one <laughs> crazy ass martial artist, one one of the girls is uh, like a real straight up spy, espionage kind of shit. One's really yep. smart. Yeah, one, one, one's, one's got a mechanic. A mechanic. Yeah. yeah. So this could be a really cool. St it's a great start to a book. First it's of all, it's a surprising start. I mean, the yeah. cover is a bunch of pregnant women. Right. I, I, yeah, you I, didn't really I get what was going on. Yeah, it's totally misleading, and, and I like that about the cover. Was, yeah. I really do like that about the cover. So. The artwork inside was great. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's it's just a really great way to introduce you to all the characters at once mm -hmm. without having to get so much involved in each person's individual story. Now you can, you know, you're on the hook, you bite. I'm right. enjoying it. Yeah. I'd love, to, I, I can't wait for part two. Yeah, and when just, they when they actually meet. Yeah. That's going to be fun. Yeah. And that's you be can fun. delve into each character's personality and story as you go on. Yeah, and exactly. let everything build on its own. It's a, it's a great start to a new story. Guys, I like it. get a hold get of it. this. Illegitimate's number one. Fantastic book. <clears throat> Surprise hit of the week, for sure. Yeah. Definitely. So you want to give away some shit? Sure. Let's give away right. some shit. So we have the Punisher Christmas Max special. That the question was, what is the Punisher's real first name? Everybody knows him as Frank Castle, but what is his real name? And happened to be Ryan Belrose that wrote in, and you were randomly selected by our raffle copter. Well, raffle. Yep. Yep. And wow. Ryan answered correctly. I tasted that. Frank Castle's real name Ooh. is Francis Castiglione. He's a Guido. Yes, he is. Mm -hmm. That's why I like him so much. Don't call him that's his face. Oh. <laughs> we would have also accepted Frank Castiglione because apparently, according to uh, Wikipedia and everything, uh, Frank legally changed his name from Francis to Frank. Uh, in order to serve a third tour in Vietnam. Cause that's what everyone wants to do. Yeah, is you want to go fucking third... back to Nam. Well, he was yeah. nuts. So that was well, probably clearly. what Dennis is doing. He obviously hasn't healed from that either. No? No. So Frank or Francis Castiglione was the answer we were looking for. Ryan, send us your name and address, and we will have your book shipped off to you, along with a nice autographed Peach Basement postcard for thanks for playing. And, you know... Presented by Peach Basement. All that kind of stuff. Nice. Usually it's thanks for playing presented by Capcom, you know? You get the little message yeah, at the end yeah, game. Yeah, I got you. I'm following yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> we got something else to give away, too. Thanks to our esteemed director, Roger. We got this Star Wars Han Solo in Carbonite business card holder. If you are a successful soul and actually have a career worth talking about that you want to give your shit away to people... This could be a cool contest worth entering. This is actually pretty heavy. Like, yeah, dude, is. that is. This is not some plastic shit. This is straight no, up metal. That'll stop yeah. a bullet. This is a cool Easily. gift. <laughs> that'll, that'll stop a bullet. You and keep that I shit mean, right in your breast pocket right there. Yeah. I mean, you know, you might actually get a little bit stronger, a little bit bigger in one arm just from, you know, whatever side you And I mean, if you get a nice close up of this, you can see it's actually like beveled where, you know, Han yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in case that you got a little feet the over there and his The craftsmanship is, is top notch. It's really, well really nice. So, I am not the biggest Star Wars aficionado around, and neither of us are. So, we have a Pete's Basement trivia question for what? Are you a Star Wars aficionado? I, I'm, well, I'm a fan. An aficionado, maybe not. I mean, like, exactly. I wouldn't be able to win a Star Wars trivial pursuit. Like, you'd have to answer this, like, some crazy shit for this. Probably. Probably. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. But so, whatever. we're going to have to ask you guys a Pete's Basement trivia question. Ooh. Even better. So... In the Death of Ramon episode, what did Ramon do to my copy of Amazing Fantasy 15 that caused inevitably the death of Ramon? <laughs> He's back now because comic books, time travel, that sort of stuff. Yeah. So if you guys want to win this really nifty business card holder of Han Solo and Carbonite from Kotobukiya, go on to our Facebook right now, Tuesday, Christmas Eve, while this show just aired. You will find the raffle copter section. Type in your answer for what did son of a bitch over here do to my AF-15 copy that pissed me off in order to kill him in the Death of Ramon episode. Type in your answer. You do have to get the answer right in order to be eligible for this contest. So, no wrong answers, guys. Share the question on Facebook. Share it on Twitter. These are each, you know, other entries into this really cool contest. The contest ends... At the end of 2013, midnight, New Year's Eve. Once 2014 hits, contest's over. Then you get encased in carbonite if you try to answer. No, you really, you really don't. We don't have carbonite. But 
you don't get this really cool thing that Kotobukiya gave us, and you know it was really cool. And we'd all like to keep it, but we're gonna give it to you guys because we're very benevolent. You mm. know, it's Christmas. And we're that's very what it's magnanimous. All about. Nice. No, I'm just very nice. nice. We're not Scrooges, you know. This is for you guys, right there. Go ahead, take it. Go on our Facebook right now. <laughs> type in your answer. <laughs> and with that, Ryan, thanks for playing, man. Send us your address. Paul Jameson, thanks for the comic books. Make sure you check them out at Superhero Network on Facebook and Twitter. Go grab yourself a copy of Illegitimates Number One for some holiday reading. And make sure you tune into the audio show for the rest of the books that we're going to talk about. Make sure you subscribe to the hall so you can see what me and the fellas are reading each week. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, the Extras channel. Go on our Facebook, subscribe to Twitter. And, uh, you know, hit us up. Questions at PeteSpaceman.com. We love hearing from you guys. Use are the reason we do this shit every week. We love to hear from you. We got a whole <laughs> bunch of fan questions at the start of the audio show. So, until then, thanks remember the, guys. And with, thanks for the alcohol. We're taking two weeks off, so we'll see you in 2014. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah, Happy, Happy Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa, Happy Festivus. For the rest of us. Can you tell we were born on the same motherfucking oh. day? Oh, Jesus, here you go with that. We can continue. I just want to unload on that. This is not for you to do that. What's that? I hate you, Adrian. <laughs> All you got to do is stop it and start it again. Yeah, I'm at the point where I really don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs>